Good evening, face-to-face -face radio talk by way of Amazing Grace Outreach Ministries. So you are extremely valuable. Have you heard anyone just declare to you today? If not, I am declaring you are extremely valuable and you are worthwhile. You are significant person, even though you present circumstances that may have you feeling otherwise. I love that. I just, I, I needed to hear my voice say that because um, the affirmations that we give on our refrigerator, sometimes we have to take them to the point of actually saying them, not just reading them in silence, but saying them out loud so that it can resonate in our being because we see some parts of our circumstances as hopeless or maybe just confusing. And now we're on the cutting edge of understanding what unfounded loyalty today is kind of like a subject matter. Unfounded loyalty can really undermine um, your possibilities if you're not careful or you leaving it up to someone that's not qualified to make decisions on certain levels for you. No one but you and God come into agreement to make decisions about your forever life, your eternal life. That's a personal relationship. It will have nothing to do with politicians. Your eternal life will have nothing to do with even your pastor. Your eternal life has to do with the conduct of your character and how well you manage to allow God to have your life as being able to give you the tools that you need. So it becomes a personal relationship, a oneness. And so therefore, when I, as your fellow brother or sister, is exclaiming to you how much we need to be in fellowship because of who your extreme valuable um, attributes are to the body as a whole collective people. Also worthwhile. That's one thing the enemy has been doing a good job of making even those that are uh, in form and official leadership feel unworthy. No, 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 no. We don't agree with those kind of sentiments. We agree that you are the most significant person for the job that God has put you to do. How to raise your self-esteem and develop self-confidence. Hallelujah. The only event in the entire world you can control is what you are thinking and feeling. Amen. At the present instance. But that is enough. There's other times where we have to tell ourselves that we are who God created us to be. And we walk by faith and not by sight. That means we make moves that we don't need to worry about how they're going to turn out because we know it belongs to God. We make moves. And he got us. The battle is his, not ours. So therefore, that's all you need to be able to control. Think about that. If Satan is, can only, you know, cause your eyes to see like magic, you know, see whatever he wants you to see in a person and deceive you. You got to know what deceive, deception is. You have to know how to recognize when somebody is deceiving you or when somebody is telling you the truth. That's where we get the confusion to come in. How you doing? I see you, Miss Sharon. My buddy, you are an amazing woman of God. I can say that to you because I've been knowing you for quite a while. You are extremely valuable to me. When I see your name, I recognize that I am looking at a friend on my Facebook that has been very there for me, supporting me. I see you be passing content, sharing it with other people. I love you, sister. And I want you to know that I believe that each and every one of you that's been sticking by me, that I recognize is not in vain. We we are going to have a celebration together. That's kind of 2022's plan that some of you are either I'll be invited to an environment that you reside in. I'm not sure I remember what state you live in, but I appreciate you. 
I'm glad to get the opportunity to share that with you today. So our topic right now, we're kind of evaluating unfounded loyalty versus understanding what does loyalty truly mean. <clears throat> Excuse me. But we also letting people know today that the thinking and the feelings are very important that you have responsibility for. Amen. You have responsibility and you truly can renew your mind because you've been empowered to have a new way of thinking and seeing. And there are some having a new way of thinking and seeing, but it's not for the conclusiveness of what God wants to accomplish. So you got to know the difference. And so the words from the uh, pen uh, that's been written, in other words, is it's kind of like a personal effectiveness in terms of understanding what self-confidence um, really is. Have you ever driven your automobile when the brakes are on? Supposing that if you did that any length of time, pretty soon they would wear out. Remember the times when you arrived at a destination, reaching down to pull the parking brakes and found that it had been on all the time. Now, I have actually done that, you know, uh, it's depending on whose car I'm in, I might have done that before, which I remember, and that's really crucial. So the ridiculous way to drive a car is with the brakes on. Yeah, without realizing it or intending to do so, you mm -hmm. are moving through life with your brakes partly set. The horsepower is there but the vast areas of potential are blocked, bottomed up, restricted from effective application. If I don't say nothing else, you tell me how you're going to have confidence when you have blocked half of the resources that keep you with the confidence and the self-esteem that you need for what you think. And, uh, and your mind is trying to figure out how to solve the problem when all you had to do was take the brakes off. Oh, glory. This is a powerful word, a powerful word. If you have a good self-esteem, the image of how you see yourself, hallelujah, is on the low side of the scale, then you are probably driving with your brakes on. And that, not, will, that will not allow you to get to your destination. You, I, can, I can almost tell you, I remember leaving the house and the whole time I was wondering, did I leave anything cooking or something like that or light on because I'm not going to come right back. So sometimes our minds need to be renewed, you know, so that we can be focused when we're actually doing an action. And that way we don't have to double think ourselves or overthink or underthink or be doubtful about what we already know. Amen. I just wanted to remind people of the reality applies the breaks to a person's effectiveness. Amen. How do you feel about your worthiness and importance as a human being? These are really great questions today for us to ask ourselves. And those that are around us actually let us know what they think about us. Even if they're not saying you're great or you are a wonderful person and your worthiness is really important to me, but they are communicating how they treat you. You will know how people feel about you. Is one of the most fundamental and vital attitude structures in the reality. Now, living in a myth-type illusional system, they might not function like you, so you don't assume that everybody's on that reality level system. Amen? High self-esteem is almost universal common denominator of excellence. That's what Bishop always talk, talks about is that our performance should be of excellence. Amen? Releasing um, everything that allows your potential to flow easily. So take the brakes off today, people of God. You may be developed in one way and then maybe not quite developed in the other, but you're still on your way in the development process. So we look at the, um, the pattern of truth about your value as a part of your image. Those two are, you know, having some solidarity 
of understanding who is the image and who is the, the truth. What is the truth and who is the image of that truth? So you tend to behave in a manner that is consistent with this attitude. Now, hold up. I want to speak on this real, real clear. Because there are times when you are going to be misunderstood. That doesn't supposed to change your confidence and your attitude when somebody, you don't adjust yourself because somebody thinks low of you or assumes. Now look at this difference. They may even know that you are who you appear to be, but they're discrediting you. That's what a narcissistic mentality does. It discredits you. It always will show or try to uh, impress others about who you are. Because that's a busybody, a busybody, or someone with an agenda that is definitely not uh, in the way of supporting what truth is. Remember, we're dealing with image and truth. If they're not supporting what truth is, then your image is not going to be the right image for someone that has an undermining agenda. And so your self-esteem begins to develop in the er early years of your life. When you were very small, you got a lot of messages and signals from parents and from the uh, society environment that you lived in. Some often signals that were a uh, very positive, loving, encouraging, reinf and that doesn't necessarily, even if you got them, mean that you believe them. Amen. Something might have already happened where nobody knows about. So I love you. You are a great kid. I'm glad you are a part of our family. Some of these messages from those who are important people to us as ch children um, doesn't always make it to the registry in the form of action. You know what they say, I'm from the show me state. Well, truthfully, love proves all things and it never fails. So the uh, important point is that we understand that God created us. And that right there in itself is enough for us to realize that you've been mm -hmm. verified by heaven. Amen. Self-esteem is a matter of degree. You don't either have it or you don't. One or the other. You are somewhere on a scale ranging from the very negative to the very positive. For low to high self-esteem. People who excel on the high performance. Now, that's in the category of different people um, t determination. Everyone that plays a sport might have a different coach, but the game doesn't change. The whole overall game doesn't change the, because you have a coach that has a different method, method than you had been taught earlier. It's, it should enhance and, and bring the techniques to some point of a performance that increases your ability to perform this particular game. So this is just a little bit of tidbit of the natural man being um, brought into the references of who they are with God and who they are with themselves as physical, active people in the earth. Amen. How do some of us do this with being able to use sim simple techniques or methods that you can put into action right away that will take you into the direction you want to go. That That is a beautiful thing to have people like you, Sharon, to be in your life. Every time you have people that you value, that means you want your value level to rise because you don't want to bring a hardship on someone that loves you, and nor do you want the person that, that you want to impress about that you are trustworthy. We ended up with the word trust because of this image thing, because of this self-esteem thing. We end up with the, with the loyalty of a relationship, you know? Now, behind closed doors, a lot of us don't know what each other doing. We're just looking at, you know, what we see as evident of what you show us. But loyalty re requires us to be uh, in some communication that is face-to-face. -face. Amen? It requires that. So the next time when something goes badly, recognize what had happened. Acknowledge the error. We said that earlier this morning. 
that God said, let them honestly give the account of their misdoings. Amen. Let's all begin to do more repenting. We, that don't mean we have to beat, beat ourselves down because we made errors. But it does mean that we are letting the devil know and letting his cohorts know that we recognize we, have, we are very fallible and vulnerable to make mistakes. And once you take that power, that means you're not prideful. That means you're a humble person, that you live in a place of strength. But your strength is not to exert yourself or bully or manipulate or lie or try to connive against someone to feel empowered. Your empowerment is coming from a place that God is flowing purely through you. Because his word is pure. And he says, if I can use you, you're going to have to be honest. You're going to have to be a real living witness. You're going to have to be salt to purify and preserve. And as we look on, I'm going to close with this part. I love this. What the, When uh, it happens, you have a choice. I want to tell everyone, your confidence is your choice. Your confidence is your worthiness. You will decide to do the right thing. You don't want to lose the valuable friendships that has come into your life. Some people weren't valuable. You got to know the difference too. Some some people did not come in your life to make or add to you. They came to actually denounce you and subtract from you and try to prove that you are not who you're trying to say you are. Up until now, instead of, I can't make speeches, it will be more accurate and more helpful to change to, up until now, it hasn't been easy for me to speak to groups. You are constantly changing, so therefore, what happened then is, th is not now. Now is a whole different category. I am able to do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Amen? Uh, I love you, and thank you for coming on. If you do me a favor, I have a YouTube channel now. Most of the uh, content that we are posting will be placed on the YouTube channel. If you would do me a favor and subscribe, it's A-G-O-M Oregon. Also, we have face-to-face -face radio on YouTube at this time. And if you would subscribe, like, and share those, this particular feed will be placed there. Please share it with your neighbors and your friends because I want them to know, as I stated earlier to you, my friend, that you are extremely valuable, worthwhile, significant person, even though... Your present circumstance may have a feeling otherwise. I said a feeling. It doesn't last always. You know, trouble don't last always. So I love you and have a great day. And I'll talk to you at another time.